everything is working out for me. It's working out for you, too. It just takes believing that it is. We can have, be, and do anything. The key is to care about how you feel and choose to feel good right now. What you're about to hear is a co-creation session between me and another individual. The purpose of these sessions is to come together to focus on what is important to this person that I'm working with. But it's more than that, because that could really define a therapy session. What this is, is tuning into something more. I envision my higher self connecting with the other individual's higher self, where we sit in dialogue, we have a conversation, but we allow our intuition to guide us. That's really the magic of co-creation. We are each creators, but when we come together to co-create, it's even more powerful than a single person creating on their own. It has always brought me joy to help other people. That's what led me to become a therapist in the first place. But there's some problems in the therapy process that I recognized as I was doing the work as a therapist. And I feel now that I understand things better. I understand how to be more helpful. I understand how to tune into wisdom that we all have access to. And this allows for a different kind of experience, one that can be very powerful when intuition is guiding the session with a common goal. So when I meet with someone in a co-creation session, they get to define what it is that they are wanting to create in their life. And then I allow my higher self to jump on board with that and open up the airways, so to speak, for my intuition to bring in any kind of information that might be helpful for that individual. And they do the same. It's kind of a dance because really we're just talking back and forth and we're having a conversation. There's a dialogue going. It's solution focused, but it also brings in my education with psychology. It brings in my expertise with law of attraction and universal law in general. And it comes together in this beautiful co-creation experience. So I hope you enjoy listening to us as we co-create. And if it's something that is appealing to you, if it resonates and you feel like maybe it might be beneficial for you, then maybe you would like to have a co-creation session all of your own. Without further ado, let's get into it and co-create. Hey everyone, I'm here today again with Tara and we are going to have another co-creation session together. And Tara and I started talking a little bit before the session, kind of just trying to get some bearing on what we were going to focus on. And some really important and beneficial things came up for Tara that I think you all are going to be able to benefit from listening to because it's something that we all can relate to. And it's one of those when things are not going exactly as you want them to go and what to do in those moments. So we're going to get into it. Tara, thanks for being here today. I really appreciate you taking the time and sharing this with the audience. Thank you. I'm, I'm very glad to be here. Yeah. So can you kind of give everybody just a little rundown on what you told me has been happening lately for you? Well, um, my son and I, we actually wrote a list because uh, he was immersed in it with me. And he said, Mom, I think that there's really quite a few things more than usual that are going on. And it, it's just some tiny things, you know, like the toilet overflowing and your Internet's not working when you're trying to start a podcast. And <laughs> um, so it's gone on for a few days now. And then the most significant, I think, for me was that 
when my joy gets interrupted. So I've got this tiny slinky here. Oh, you brought it. I'm I so glad you brought the tiny slinky. <laughs> it truly is the most amazing thing. If you guys don't have this in your life, get one on the internet or at your local store. So this got, I was playing with it and it got tangled and knotted, which is a challenge. And so that was after everything had happened, um, really significant things and shifts in life, as well as just, oh, the water's over boiling in the pot, you know, simple things. So just sort of a pylon. And I was in that moment with my tiny slinky and I took a breath and I said, okay, you're just going to be art now, just twisted, tangled art. And I'm not going to keep being frustrated, trying to, you know, figure you out. Just let it go, you know, because that's what you have to do. And just let it go and prepare yourself for the next thing that's going to come up, whether it's chaos or something beautiful. You don't know, but just <laughs> meet it with calmness and grace. The, the funny thing was, though, sometimes it just takes a day. It just takes one day, one breath. I met the tiny slinky the next morning and I sat with it, you know, and I had time and I made time. I said, we're going to sit here and, you know, see if a solution can happen. And I did with slower, with more patience, the tiny slinky is now back in its form. <laughs> and, but for me, the tiny slinky didn't care, right? It had no feelings at all about anything that went on. But for me, that was incredibly meaningful and, um, just so many life lessons <laughs> through that yeah. moment with my tiny slinky. So I love that you just took the time. You're like, okay, now's not the time for me to deal with this. I'm going to set it aside. You even put a little bit of positive spin on it. Like you're going to be art over there now. And <laughs> you just let it go. And then sleeping on it. And then the next day you were able to like come at it from a different point of vibration because you weren't so negative at that point. And then you were able to focus be patient with it and unravel your tiny slinky and get your joy back. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So it got me thinking about, we've all kind of been in those times where it seems like an avalanche of negativity is coming. And no matter what you do, you're not getting the result that you want. And it's kind of overwhelming and sometimes really confusing. Like, I don't get this. I'm usually a really positive person and I know you are mm -hmm. and you gear things that way. And so it can be like, why is this happening? But it's it comes down to some really simple things as to why it's happening. And I'm just going to kind of brush over that a little bit. One thing is there's point of attraction and the way that we know what vibration we're putting out is by seeing the things that we are manifesting. And those experiences you were having are manifestations. So that tells you a lot about what your point of attraction is, what frequency you're vibrating at. Because if you're getting things you don't want, it means you're probably lower on the scale than you want to be, and you're attracting those things. And sometimes that's hard to accept. People don't want to accept that they are the ones creating those things. But that is how law of attraction works, is it's responding to what it is you're offering. And then it builds momentum. That's the other thing. Because as you start having these experiences and you're in it and you're offering some emotional response to it, which is usually negativity because it's things you don't want, then you start building some momentum, attracting those things, and it just kind of follows you. It kind of reminds me of somebody who wants to leave their job because they're unhappy at their job. And so they're like, I can't do it anymore. I'm quitting. And they quit their job and they move to a new job. And for a while, it feels really hopeful. And the next thing you know, they hate that job because they didn't actually clean anything up. They took themselves with them to the new job. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I feel like some of that was going on. Can you talk about how you had been feeling around that time period where all these things were kind of happening? Absolutely. Um, so part of me wonders and kind of steps back in the uh, observer mode, wonders if it, for me, is more of a, a cyclical um, monthly 
situation. And I think that I am starting to observe, or at least I've said it out loud a few times to know that I've noted to myself that there's about four days a month, specifically time <laughs> for my cycle, that um, I like to call it balance, where there's some things that I might need to focus on that I've been kind of slacking on because all of the other days that are not those four days are filled with joy and awesomeness and vibrance. And then it's like, whoa, 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 let's balance it out. Let's make sure we don't get too far ahead of ourselves, you know, because there are things going on in the background that do need to be tended to. And I think that while I would like to learn those lessons and move through those things, in ways that are less chaotic, um, the most value comes out of those. You know, I don't think that I, you would, or that I would retain the lessons learned through a different experience. You know, you have to do the work, so to speak. Like if you want to climb the mountain and get to the peak and make that progress, it's going to take work and exertion and, um, it's not always going to be easy. So in some ways, I, I love the challenge of it. And I'm so thankful that in, the, in these last four days, I had my son at my side for most of it. So I could talk with him and I didn't feel as crazy because he was also observing the chaos going, yeah, mom, what's going on <laughs> like over there in your world? So, and, and that too brought to me that it wasn't also going on directly in his world. So these are my lessons, my cycle, you know, my moments. And so, so many lessons were learning there. One, don't project that onto others. Don't invite others into my so-called chaos, you know, and meet it with grace, meet it with patience and step back and say, okay, this is going on. Is it drastic? is it simple, you know, step, step kind of outside of it and don't give it that frustrate, that energy of frustration. Um, so why do you think those things happen? Like, why do you feel like these contrasting experiences are occurring? Like the purpose that they serve? Yeah, I think progression, I think progression is one of them. And I did, um, you mentioned, you know, how did you feel? And I kind of felt it coming on. I, I really did. I thought, okay, I'm um, sort of stuck in a way and, uh, you know, kind of looking around and seeking either motivation or knowledge or resources. And um, I, so there's, I think that it's, it is just sort of lessons to be learned, like I was saying, and I'm sure there's more to it. Um, mm -hmm. And maybe you have an idea or <laughs> something of, or perhaps experiences like this um, of why these things tend to come into your, into your path. Well, you're right. I was kind of uh, leading there. <laughs> because <laughs> I did have uh, something that I wanted to contribute to that. But first, let's talk about the emotional piece because you mentioned that you did feel it coming on. And that's huge. That's, that's telling me that you're tuned in to your guidance. And it's letting you know that that's your vibrational frequency. Because if you feel something kind of like, Ugh, then you know, that's what you're offering. Because emotions aren't actually creating anything. But they are communicating to you what you're creating. And that's important to realize. So that's why feeling good is so important. And that's why I talk about that so much on the podcast. Because when you're feeling bad, you're creating the things you don't want. It really requires you to be feeling good in order to be in that space. But nobody feels good all the time. Nobody does. And you're really good at gearing it that way. So I don't think that you're doing anything wrong. I don't think you could do anything better. It's just one of those things where it's like an acceptance. And maybe this will help a little bit. When those contrasting experiences do happen, it's actually serving you in a really big positive way. Because those experiences are happening so that you can get specific about what it is you really do want, what it is you do want to create based on what you know you don't want. 
I mean, when the toilet overflows, you know that, well, you want a fully functioning toilet that operates the way it's supposed to, and you don't want to have to clean up big messes like that. (laughs) So that's your rocket of desire that's shooting off at that moment as you experience the yuck of this experience you don't want. And so if you can kind of think about that when it's happening and know, okay, I'm just in contrast right now. This has to happen in order for me to put something I really do want into my vortex. And then that can kind of mellow it out a little bit, allow for you to align with what's happening because everything is always working out. It's just a matter of aligning with that energy versus the contrasting energy and feeling your way through that. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. And the, um, it's sort of, I can also feel it kind of coming out now, um, yesterday a little bit. And then today, even though <laughs> we, I had some technical issues getting online with you this morning, I thought, oh boy, <laughs> here we go. Um, and then it worked out though, like almost instantly. It did. Yeah. I just, um, and you know what though, the things, another really, really important thing something happened. I spilt my coffee and then another chain of events led to another. And then I ran into a friend and that sparked conversation. And so that just settled really well with me that, and, and it does help knowing full well that things are totally working out for you, even when your coffee spills, because that event is going to lead you to the next thing, the next resource, the next person that you need to help with, to be aligned with, or the event that's going to progress you. And I was stuck making a few different decisions about, um, you know, which path to take. And so yesterday some clarity came. And, um, I think that one of my questions is, you know, I, I'm a person of many passions, so many, too many. And so, you know, which direction to take and whatever's fueling me at 11 o'clock at night before bed that I really I, I want to stay up and do it rather than go to sleep, even though I know I need sleep. That's the thing that I want to continue to pursue. And so that sort of solidified um, last night after this chaotic four days. So absolutely, uh, you know, things do grow out of these moments. And yeah, I'm so thankful. So in talking about your cycle and you, is it always four days? Or is it just around four days usually? It is. It's approximately four days. Okay. Mm -hmm. And are you particularly fatigued in that time? Do you really just want to rest? Yeah. So I I took the time to actually write this down a few months of it to see if there were any patterns. And there definitely are. And um, there, yes, there's moments of rest. And I try to listen to those and make sure that... As much as I can, I'll set myself up for, you know, don't make too many appointments around that time and that sort of thing. So I try to be a little preemptive, but also um, I don't know, you know, it's not like on the 12th of every month, you know, sort of thing. It's It does fluctuate a little bit as far as well, sure. and times. Yeah. I just, I know I can feel it, on, feel it coming on. And there's, <laughs> there's like four weeks in a month and there's definitely four we'll call them moods that I'm in that that honestly I have control but in some ways I don't have control and it's liberating because I can let go and be in that um, you know in that space and be aware and knowledgeable and know my the boundaries that I've set for myself and when it happens and you realize like there's something you have to do. You mentioned, well, there's always things you have to do. Are you able to let stuff go easier during that time? Or do you kind of force yourself to get up and do the things that need to be done? It depends on what it is. If it's dishes, let it go. If it's an appointment that I need to go to, I'll go to it. And if it's something that I need to attend to, um, and other people are involved, I'll let them know, Hey, I'm not hundred percent today, yeah. you know? And then obviously they can relate, you know, okay. All, us also, <laughs> yeah. you know? Um, and so, yeah, I do. I try to respect it. I, I really have learned that it's, 
it's not okay to push. I think that when you're when you're pushing, especially if you're in your frustration or your bitterness or you know whatever sort of mode you get in, I think that it's not a good idea whatsoever to continue to move forward in that. So recognizing those moments and saying, "Whoa, stop!" Even if it's for just a few seconds or however yeah. long you might need, um, because in that in that pausing and that stopping um, once you move through that you're going to get a lot less resistance have you been considering one-on-one sessions with me well if you have i wanted to let you know that there's actually two ways to go about doing that you can go the therapy route or you can go the coaching route i am a licensed mental health counselor here in the state of washington and i'm actually registered as a telehealth provider So this is something that might even be covered with your insurance company. And what you can do is you can go to the Northwest Regional Telehealth Resource Center, or NRTRC for short, and you can find me there in Squim, Washington, S-E-Q-U-I-M. So if you're in Washington and you're looking to have therapy with a mental health counselor, you can work with me. And we can do that virtually. That's what telehealth is. It allows us to meet without having to be in person. So what you do is you go to www.nrtrc.org and search for behavioral health in Squim, Washington, and you'll find Dr. Williams LLC is there. And that's how you schedule with me for therapy sessions. If you're wanting coaching sessions, you just go to my website, www.drwilliamspodcast.com. Right on the home page, there's a button there that says work with Dr. Williams, and it'll take you to my scheduling calendar where you can set up a free 15 minute consult so that we can talk about it and see if it feels like it would be a good fit for you. Even if you've done traditional therapy in the past or coaching sessions with someone else and you felt like it wasn't a good fit, I get that, but I encourage you to give me a chance because I do things a little bit differently and I might be the fit that you've been looking for. So there's really nothing to lose. Set up the consult. We'll just have a chat and see how you feel about it. Okay, let's get back to the episode. You got a lot of wisdom there. That That's terrific that you're able to do that because, you know, a lot of people, they just push through no matter what. They don't feel good and they're forcing themselves to do things because whatever the reason might be, I'm type A and I have to follow through or I feel guilt if I don't do it or whatever it is, they make themselves do it. And really it is compounding and creating more of a problem. I think it's great that you allow yourself for some of those things to just fall to the wayside. And you're like, you know what? The dishes don't have to be done right now. I can tend to my needs right now. And that's better for everybody. Um, For the things that you do feel like you have to do, do you have a way of increasing the way you feel or attending to your vibration before you go do those things? Do you have anything in practice right now that you are doing? Yeah, yeah. I thought, um, as an example, today I knew that this appointment and several other appointments that I made today were going to be in this time um you know and that's fine life goes on you know and i can't just go retreat for (laughs) five days when i need to um although i'm trying to set my life up for that i think (laughs) that um for me coming in coming into this meeting with you and other appointments that i had today making sure that i have that space to drink some water i think that if i can be near water water is one of my Uh, transition elements. So utilizing that, whether it's a drink of water, a shower, jumping in the lake, whatever I can do to transition smoothly, um, breath work. And there's so many practices, tumor breathing, fire breath, movement of my body, even if it's a just, you know, a four minute song, songs are about that long, just dance, shake it out, you know, just (laughs) release. And just, I do, you know, this hand motion, (laughs) just out (laughs) get rid of it and just uh sometimes singing so so any sort of like out in you know breathe it in bring it in the good and then release the bad sort of 
mentality in whatever way that that can take shape. Um, so those are some of my, my basic go-tos. I am um, personally, I know that that's a practice that a lot of people use the the breathe in good air or light and breathe out darkness or negativity. I struggle with that. And I don't know what it is about it. But I like to breathe in good and release good. Because I feel like if I'm releasing negativity, then I'm acknowledging that I had it in me. And I, I don't even want to acknowledge that. That's just me sharing a little something with you. Because I, I've always felt that way. Like I've tried doing that, like in meditation and, and with breath work. And I always feel like weird about releasing negative or bad energy out. I feel like that's almost like putting it in. Yeah. Well, and I want to ask, because that's a, that's a struggle that I have when I'm doing deeper meditation, where if I do that shake off, I think to myself, well, where's that going now? Is, yeah. <laughs> is, that, is, is somebody else going to, you know, grab onto that? So I think the terminology that you use in your thoughts, um, maybe have it dissipate or, yeah, turn, you know, so I, I fully agree with you that setting that intent, just breathe in the good, breathe, breathe out the good. Yeah. Really, really, really amazing. I, I love that. I've thought about that too with the releasing and I don't remember who suggested this to me, but somebody suggested kind of a downward motion as if you're putting it down into the earth where it can then be absorbed. And I don't know, um, what's the word I'm looking for kind of filtered through the ground and turned back into something positive to come back through. But that was really helpful to me, like earthly kind of, filtration when you send out any kind of energy down into the ground. It's grounding. I mean, that makes sense. But yeah, well, I think that's great. I think that's wonderful that you have those set practices that you do. I mean, you're really doing so many great things for your mental health and your spiritual growth and I and your just your intention on your worldview. And that was something else I wanted to talk about because when we were talking, you said, I just want everybody to thrive. And if everybody was thriving, I could retire. (laughs) (laughs) So I want to talk about that with you. What is it that you think about when you're considering other people thriving? Oh, just everything from, from the, from like you were saying, the core of the earth and the core of everything that we know from the moment we're born to the expanses of the unknown and the, the farthest reaches of our imagination of the universe and beyond um, that if that could all just thrive, <laughs> that'd be great. But other than that, I think that it is that I see a lot of energy and a lot of intellect and a lot of time spent focusing on the negative, like you were, like we were just saying. And I think that, um, in our school systems and our healthcare, so in every system that we have at home personally, and then out in business, um, there's a lot of miscommunication, misinterpretation, um, you know, just a busy culture. And so those, when you find yourself in those communities or those events or in your home space when things are harmonious. Um, There's laughter, there's joy, there's, um, you know, compatibility, that sort of thing. I would like to move more in that direction. So, you know, and I experienced these things with people in my life and I just, it's, it's becoming more and more important to me to pause uh, and just say, Hey, I, I can see that we're not communicating. Well, is this just a right now thing? Like just, a, just a bad day, or is there something that we can implement in the way that we communicate so that we can meet each other with more harmony because we don't all come from the same background. So taking that time to, I don't know, utilize the knowledge that we do have so that we can all operate better together. Um, beyond that, there's, 
it gets really complex with healthcare and school systems and things like that. So I don't want to dive too deep. Um, and I, well, that, you know, but that's a good point. I mean, yeah. I, I, when I asked you that, I kind of was wondering where you were going to take it. If you were going to take it to noticing all the thriving that is happening in the world or the lack thereof. And that's important because if you're really wanting something and what you are wanting is grand scale, we're talking global wellness yeah. is, is kind of what you're focused on. And that can seem really big and complex and hard to grasp, but it is very possible and it is in the making. And there's a lot on both ends of that that are happening at any given moment. There's a lot of thriving happening and there's a lot of lack of thriving that is happening. And where we choose to focus determines our part in that creation. And sometimes it can be hard to take our focus from the lack of because that stuff really gets our attention. That's like painful stuff, hurtful angry, frustrating, negative, I mean, hungry kids, mm -hmm. abuse, um, relationship problems, conflicts. Uh, there's a lot of, I mean, war, you know, there's a lot of really big negative things that are really out in front of us a lot of the time, because that's the stuff that makes the page. And when we focus on it, which is easy to do, we're actually contributing to it. So with this notion of creating thriving for everyone, I love it so much. I, I love that that is your focus and your intention because I align with that. That's what I want. That requires a little bit of ignorance and putting our head in the sand and some people don't feel comfortable doing that because they're like, no, this stuff over here is real and we got to talk about it because we need to do something about it. Whereas energetically, that's not how it works. Energetically, we got to take our focus from it. And we do have to just focus on the good stuff that we're seeing if that's what we want more of. So how do you do that? How do you put your head in the sand when you notice those things that are happening that you really don't want in the world? Well, I think one thing you said, um, you said it's easy to focus on the negative. And I would like to say, no, thank you. It's not um, as easy for me because I don't watch the news. I don't have cable TV. I'll turn the radio on and I'll hear something and I will choose to change that channel. And I Good think for you. it is important to, um, and you really, really hit home with me. We were talking on the phone and you said something about my phrasing of using the word healing versus the word wellness. Mm -hmm. And that has had such a huge contribution in my own personal healing. So I think that the things that we focus our mind on, we focus our thoughts and our words. I told my boss, I said, your words are important. He said, no, they're not. And I said, <laughs> well, we had a, we had a conversation there. And so I think that, uh, I, I get pulled or pushed or, um, you know, guided on an individual level. As an example, a person was going through a breakup and they were having a challenge. Um, you know, and a lot of people meet, um, a breakup, whether it's your work or your, your romantic relationship with distaste, sorrow. And yes, while those emotions definitely need a moment and need to be tended to, I offered to this person I was speaking with that in those moments, the person that you love, that you have this a choose love, choose celebration basically is what I said. And so then they called me back, um, a few days later and said, you know what, what, whatever I had said to them really stuck. And they said, I got, so the, the ex, um, left them for a same sex partner. And so it's the month of June. Yay. And so, oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. And so he, um, he sent his ex a, a letter saying just sort of a celebratory thing. And I thought that's so much better. Doesn't that feel yeah. better? Um, 
And another example is that, so these are just individual moments and I'll make this one quick, is that a, I sent out a song in a group message and this gentleman said, oh, he thumbs down, you know, thumb down. And th that doesn't feel good to get a thumbs down, you know, in this society that we're in now. And so I texted him, I said, what's your deal? He's like, oh, that's not my music. I'm a heavy metal guy. I'm not into this techno new wave, whatever. <laughs> and I'm like, well, does it feel better to be supportive in your community or does it feel better to just like stand up for the hardcore like mentality that you're never going to change because you're, that's just who you are. And, you know, he, he sat on it for a minute and he, he then thumbs up and I said, does that feel good? Like, does that feel good to support me and who I am? Because I'm supporting you. I love that you're in the metal and that's great. Like we that's can awesome, great Tara. support each other. And so when I can make these individual, I think that what it is, is when you're given those opportunities in your individual moments in, in time, if it's with children or your coworkers or your lover, do what you can, say what you can, feel your intuition and move with it respectfully with consent, obviously. And then if you're able, and if it's your calling, share it with the world as much as possible, because we're not the only ones saying these things. And there's millions of other people that are on board, either just passively or super, super actively. But the more, the less passive we get, I think the better, you know, intentionally living your life that what other, ah, why would you do it otherwise? <laughs> but that's just me, you know? So, so those, that's those wonderful. Are some of the things that I, I love that he was receptive to you. I mean, that says a lot about you and how you communicated that there was no defensiveness there. He, you know, which he could have easily been defensive. Yeah. But because you presented it in such a way and he opened, that's a beautiful thing. Well, I, I think just another real quick, um, I noticed when, you know, in those four days, a lot less receptivity. And then when I am more aligned, so much more receptivity and it's almost to a magical, like, whoa, this person has blocked me off for years. And now all of a sudden to acknowledge the fact that, you know, that they're receptive. It's, it's so meaningful and I don't know, powerful. It's, <laughs> it's unbelievable. That's saying a lot about you too, because you're right. You're talking about the receptivity of others, but really we're always in a receptive mode of something. And what we are receiving are those manifestations we're, we're recognizing around us. And during those four days, your receiving mode is a little lower than what you're used to. And then when you do get more aligned, now you're in that receiving mode of being higher on the scale and receiving the things that you do want. It's awesome that you even recognize that because that just goes to show that when you are out of alignment, you're feeling it in a really big way and you're noticing it. And if that's only four days out of the month, I think you're doing pretty great. Don't you? I mean, yeah. four days is really minimal. I'm celebrating it. Yeah. I'm like, all right, I can chill for four days. Right? <laughs> no worries. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I just, I wanted to clarify just for anybody listening, you, you brought up the healing versus wellness thing. And I wanted to clarify on that. Um, you had mentioned some affirmations that you had designed that you came up with on your own. And one of them had to do with talking about healing. And what I had shared was that I like the word wellness better, just because it has more of a positive energy, because healing is acknowledging that there's something there to be healed. There's something there that is not well. We normally look at healing as a positive thing. But when you're looking at it energetically, you have to look at what that underlying energy is kind of referring to. So I just wanted to clarify that. Um, but I think that I'm really impressed with you. I, I just think that you're doing so awesome. And I think that your contribution to the world is extreme. And I appreciate it. And I, I love that you're putting it out there and you're sharing it with other people and they're feeling it. And they are responding to it. And that's, I mean, a, somebody like me, I, I appreciate that so much because that's where I'm coming from. Like that's, 
the point, like you said, of living is to, to be that. And I just, I love what you're being. Yeah, I wouldn't, it would be purposeless without you, without others. So thank you for being a part of it. If you're enjoying the podcast, you can show your support by leaving a rating and a review on your favorite podcast platform. You also can follow Dr. Williams' podcast on all social media platforms and subscribe on YouTube and by going to www.drwilliamspodcast.com. Deliberate creation is the key to living life satisfied. And that is my wish for all of you.